So I'm finally back with day 38, which was to be inspired by a race of people. So I've picked um, Indigenous Australians, um, which are our Aboriginal Australians, our First, First Nations people. Um, I really love uh, their art, uh, particularly their paintings and also things like their basket weaving, which I've had um, some lessons in learning how to make the baskets. Um, this project today is going to be inspired by their paintings. So I have a particular um, mother and daughter artist team that I really love who are both Indigenous and um, they are called, I think it's Mimi and Jinda. I'll put a um, link down the bottom um, in case you're interested to their Instagram page. So I really love their art because it's like it's traditional Aboriginal paintings where they use traditional shapes and forms and things like that and all their artworks are tell a story so they mean different things but they're painting them in really pretty colors which wouldn't normally be the traditional colors that our indigenous people have painted in so i really love them and my goal is one day that i'd really love to buy one of their original artworks so my project today, I'm going to continue with the watercolour theme background because I really enjoyed making those cards the other day. So what I'm doing is I'm picking the colours of a outback sunset. So I've got some sort of pinks, reds, orange and yellows. So I've blended them in on um, some watercolour paper and now I'm just drying it with my hairdryer. And then I decided to do a second page because I had a lot of watercolour paint left and I didn't want to waste it. So what I'm doing is I'm just wetting the paper with my um, water, my water, which is already kind of tinted, sort of a light orangey yellow. And what I'm going to use is the technique that was developed by Jaff, or I think it was developed by Jaff. Um, from Medieval Mirage, where she tea dyes and coffee dyes using plastic doilies. So I went and bought myself some plastic doilies. For those of you in Australia, I just picked them up at Spotlight. And what I'm doing is I've popped the plastic doily onto my wet watercolor paper, and then I'm sponging the remaining um, watercolor inks onto the paper to, it kind of gives it a pattern. And I do really like how this turned out. Jaff does it a little bit differently. I will link her video below as well. Um, she gets some amazing results with tea and coffee dye. And I know my sister Rachel has been doing it as well. And she's been getting some great results. Um, she does this sponging, but her papers, I don't think it's wet to begin with. And then um, she lets every, she just loads it all up on top of each other and lets it air dry. But I wanted to speed mine up a bit. So I've used the hair dryer. You probably will get a better result if you let it air dry but I'm actually happy with how um, this page came out I think it looks really good
so here's my paper done I think it looks good so on the back of each of the watercolor papers I'm putting some pretty Australian wallpaper which has Australian native plants on the back of each one I'm going to show you uh, what book I got that from and I bought it from a shop well actually my stepsister gave it to me from a shop called few and far which is down in barrel in the southern highlands in New South Wales um, but I'm sure you can find it online if you're interested I will show you the cover in a minute so I'm just covering the back of the watercolor paper and then on the back of each of my um, watercolor pages I stick some of the wrapping paper So paper stuck down and here is the book that I got it from, all wrapped up botanicals. Um, you can see the book there. Um, so now I just need to trim off the excess wrapping paper so that it is the same size as my watercolour paper. Now my watercolour paper um, for those in Australia is A4. I'm not sure if A4 is the same size around the world. I think it might not be. Possibly in America it's different, um, but I, I don't know the exact dimensions. You just have to look it up, but it doesn't really matter about the dimensions. You could make this in whatever dimensions you want. So now we have both papers trimmed down to the same size of the watercolour paper. So what I'm going to do with each of my pages is to fold them in half so that the watercolour side is facing out and my intention is to use these two uh, watercolour pages to make a little little tiny journal. Um, it's uh, not going to be anything too fancy. I'm going to make it fairly plain on the inside with the intention of probably doing some decoration along the way as part of my 100 day project. So you might be wondering where my inspiration for the Indigenous Australians is coming from. Um, I'm about to decorate the outside covers with some beautiful Australian bird illustrations, which they're black and white ones, which you're about to see. Here they are. So I've, I've found four birds that I really love and I'm going to cut these out and each side of my watercolor page will have um, a bird so there'll be two birds per little journal that I'm making
Now I'm just gluing my birds onto the front and the back of each of my journal pages. I'm just using a standard glue stick, Yuhu glue stick. Um, it seems to hold it down quite well. And later on I'll stitch around the outside as well. The birds are all stuck down and now I'm going to do um, some just doodling all over the front and back of these cards in the style of indigenous paintings. So in indigenous paintings we learn how to do the different symbols at school. There are lots of different symbols that are used by indigenous people to represent different meanings. So for example, um, just trying to think, so they use um, dots I can't remember what the dots are for I think those little circles I've done at the top might be representing stars I'm going to do some little circles inside circles inside circles which I think represents billabongs or water holes um, little dashes that I'll be doing are representing ants etc so I'm not using all their patterns there's a few that I just kind of do it all myself um, but I'm definitely inspired by their beautiful paintings. So use, these are Posca pens that I'm using, the Posca paint pens. They're my son's pens. Um, he likes to use them on lots of different things. So I'm just using his, um, his pens to do my doodling. Now these are not traditional colours by any stretch of the imagination. I actually end up using quite a lot of colour, bright colours, particularly even some neon colours. Um, which is inspired by Mimi and Jinder, the, the two artists that I told you that I really liked. Um, so I'll just let you watch me doodle for a little while and then I'm going to turn these covers into a little journal.
So now what I'm doing, I get a piece of manila, manila folder or file folder and I'm going to cover it in some of the Tim Holtz tissue paper and cut it into a long strip so that I can generate a front and back pocket on the inside of the journal. Using PVA glue, I just attach the strip onto the bottom of the inside cover uh, just to make two pockets um, for my journal so you can put some journaling cards etc on the inside. Now I'm just going to use some clips here to hold the car two pieces of cardboard together just to allow them to dry so that they stay stuck together. On the front cover I decide that I want to add a label on each one um, just to allow space for someone that might want to write something like memories or journal or someone's name that you know if you wanted to give this to someone I don't know what I'm going to do with them. Um, a few people have asked what I'm going to do with all of these um, bits and pieces that I've been making. I'm definitely going to make a journal. Um, I'm probably going to make several, uh, maybe a couple. Um, and I'm going to keep one maybe to give to someone and then I'm probably planning on doing a bit of a giveaway so I'll probably make a second journal at the end um, as a giveaway and then I also would
probably give away some of the little bits and pieces that I've made, like some of the folders and things like that. But some of the pieces I'd like to keep because I haven't, before this project, I haven't done a hell of a lot of junk journaling. So um, some of the bits and pieces that I really like, I will end up keeping for myself or for my family. Um, my son might want to have a few bits and pieces Although, I don't know if any are too boy for him. I might have to do some more masculine ones for him. So, my pockets are now stuck in. I'm just trimming off the excess on the edge there. And then what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to stitch around the outside with a little bit of zigzag stitch in places and then some straight stitch using a brown, a dark brown thread on the sewing machine. I did my stitching off screen but you can see there's just a stitch running around there and there's a little bit of zigzag stitching as well in a couple of places so I just like the way it kind of finishes it off and it's also going to secure that inside pocket now what I've done is I've gathered a bunch of papers I've tried to keep them in kind of earthy Australian tones to go on the inside and this is going to be what I think people might call a naked journal so it's just the pages but I haven't I'm not going at to add any pockets or any tuck spaces or belly bands or anything at this point in time I may um, want to add them later on so I've collected up um, 24 pieces of paper so that they'll end up being 12 sheets of paper in each journal which would be lots of journaling space and decorating space in the end So I'm just placing in all my bits and pieces, um, making sure that I'm spreading out the scrapbooking paper, which is a bit more interesting, with some tea dyed paper. There's even some tea dyed scrapbooking paper that I got from Jenny Mae June on Instagram. And I'm just lining them up and I will clip them into the cover because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use the sewing machine to stitch down the middle rather than do like a book binding kind of method. So all clipped in place and I will stitch down the seam or I stitch down the seam off camera. 
So these are my little um, journals done, inspired by Indigenous Australians artwork. Um, and I've wrapped them up with some sari silk. Uh, so on the inside, you've got that pocket. And also there's one in the back with the pretty Australian wallpaper and then earthy sort of toned um, pages that will be embellished later on or can be embellished by whoever gets to keep these. Whether I keep one for myself or whatever, I don't know yet. But anyway, um, I hope you like what I've done. A little bit different, a bit of mixed media with Posca pens and watercolour paints and different types of papers and digital printouts, etc. Um, just if you're interested, if you ask, want to know where those birds come, came from, they're from the Biodiversity Heritage Library on Flickr. Um, you need to search up Biodiversity Heritage Library as a person not a group the wrong thing will come up if you search group you need to search person and then i just um put in australian australian birds and found those images and they are completely in the public domain they're very old looks like they're from the 1800s so you're able to use them in your journals which is fantastic so i hope you enjoyed seeing what i've done i spent a couple of days on this one i did the outside cover and then i kind of finished it off today so sorry i haven't been that active this week i will try and get um, another project or two done tomorrow so hope you uh like these journals and they might give you some inspiration to do something for yourself and i will see you again soon thanks for watching and thanks for all the lovely comments on my last video by the way i haven't replied yet i will reply probably tomorrow but i really appreciate everyone's support thank you and i'll see you later bye